up next on Hudson Church. The abundant life that Jesus paid the price for us to live in 2024, we need power and we need authority from God. And once again, thank you for being here uh, in Jesus' mighty name. So uh, as I'm studying what message to give, uh, and this is something that when I was not saved, when I was in the world, I used to study a lot about uh, worldly principles, but now it's godly principles. Nicole, uh, I want you to be, it's going to be a good message for us tonight. Uh, Nicole, the, uh, I'm sorry, Linda and Jennifer. <laughs> We have it? Okay, let's all read together. Power and authority. Okay, power and authority. And you see a police officer, you see holding up his hand, and you see a big truck uh, that he's exerting his power and his authority. We're going to get to that towards the end of the message. But it's important, Hudson Church, for us to understand this lesson. And some of us, our lives are not going the way we want them to go because we're not understanding these principles that are available for all believers. So in order to live the abundant life that Jesus paid the price for us to live in 2024, we need power and we need authority from God. Can I get an amen from that? You need power and you need authority from God. We have to understand that Jesus came to give us life and life in abundance. Too many Christians are just surviving life. And that's not what Jesus paid the price on the cross for, for us. He doesn't want you to survive. He wants you to thrive in Jesus' name. He went to hell. He took the keys from, from the devil. Uh, 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 he wrestled them away from him so that we can live, enjoy life in abundance here on planet Earth. Amen? Amen. Amen. So first of all, you have to know that what you have a right to, so then you can use your power and authority to defend it. If you don't know what you have, you're not, you, you don't know what you have to defend. So John 10.10, 10, let's start from there. Ready? Let's read. The thief. Who's the thief? He does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come. Who is I in this sentence? Jesus, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So make no mistake about it that Jesus wants you to have life and life in abundance. Amen? Amen. So far too many Christians, and pay attention, are trying to live here on earth using their own power instead of the power that God provides to us uh, through his grace and through the word of God and through the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. You want to do the work on your own power, and that's why you're living frustrated lives uh, to, to, in your marriages as a parent, as a boss, as an employee, as a friend, as a brother. You need the power that God uh, supplies to us freely in order to have an abundant life here in 2024. Amen. So, uh, so it is important for us to understand that just because this power and this authority is readily available to us through Jesus, we must learn how to use the power and the authority correctly. Can someone use power and authority incorrectly? Yes. How many had power, parents that when they corrected you, you know, they did it out of anger? And how many as, as parents, uh, uh, you know, punish kids, our kids out of anger? That's not using our power and authority correctly. We're supposed to do it to teach them a lesson, not to get our anger, uh, you know, off on them. So power and authority can be used incorrectly. Tonight we want to learn how to use it correctly in Jesus' name. Amen? So let's begin. After the resurrection, okay, Jesus told the disciples to wait in Jerusalem until they receive the promise from God. That promise is the Holy Spirit. Okay, uh, and as he was preparing to leave, I want to just show you all these scriptures so you can understand. We have the, uh, uh, the Bible says, out of the mouth of uh, two or more witnesses, let every word be established. Amen. So we start off with John 16 7. Look what it says. Ready? Nevertheless, I tell you the truth that it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, 
I will send him to you. So Jesus is the one who sends us the Holy Spirit. Okay, so that's important for us to understand. So now, look at this in Acts chapter 1, what it says. And while being in their company and eating with them, does Jesus want to have lunch with you? Yes, he does. <laughs> so he wants to go to Ventana's with me. I already have, when I go to eat at Ventana's, I have his chair reserved there for, for uh, Jesus to come. You know who else wants to eat with you? The devil. So you better be careful that you're eating with Jesus, not with the devil. Amen? Right, you're going to hear the devil today. You're going to hear, we're going to whack him today in Jesus' name. Amen? You're going to see uh, verse 5. Look what it says. For John, I know, I didn't finish reading verse 4, right? Let's go back again, verse 4. Please. And while being in their company and eating with them, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for, the fa for what the Father had promised, of which he said, you have heard me speak. This he's talking about when he spoke about it in John 16. Uh, now look at John 16, uh, uh, verse 7. 16, 7, please. Okay, no, I'm going to finish five. Thank you very much. I like that. They're helping me. Okay? For, for John baptized with water, but not many days from now you shall be baptized with, placed in, introduced into the Holy Spirit. So you see two different experiences, being born again, being baptized in water, and being baptized and introduced to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Two separate events in our lives of a believer. If you have not been baptized by the Holy Spirit and you've been baptized in water, you can do that today here at Hudson Church in Jesus' name. Amen. John 16, 7. Look what it says. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, uh, if I, but if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Amen? I just repeated that scripture, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I apologize for that. And I did write it twice in my notes, but I was not correct on that one. But that's okay. Uh, the only perfect one is Lord Jesus. We all make a mistake, right? So can I get an applaud for, thank God that I make mistakes, but I repent in Jesus' name. Amen? So now look at Luke 24. Look what it says. Then he said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything which is written concerning me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Verse 45. Then he thoroughly opened up their minds to understand the scriptures. In order to understand the word of God, do you need to have your minds opened up? Yeah, 20 you're trying to read the word of God on your own power, and you're not going to understand it, and it doesn't make any sense to you. Okay, verse 46, look what it says. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ, the Messiah, should suffer, and on the third day rise from among the dead. 47, and that repentance with a view to, and as the condition of forgiveness of sins, should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. That's why Jerusalem is so important, because the word of God started in Jerusalem. Amen. Amen? Verse 48. You are witnesses of these things, and verse 49, and behold, I will send forth upon you what my Father has promised, but remain in the city of Jerusalem until you are closed with power from on high. So the Holy Spirit and power go together in Jesus' name. Amen? Acts chapter 1, chapter, uh, verse 8. Look what it says. Let's all read together, please. But you shall receive power. What is power? Ability, efficiency, and might. When the Holy Spirit has what? Come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. Where? In Jerusalem, and all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends, the very bounds of the earth. Amen? So now let's look at shift gears authority, okay? He's given us authority, Hudson Church, and some of us do not know how to use our authority. Some of you, uh, because you don't enforce your word, your kids run over you. Some of you know when you say something to your kids and you keep your word, they listen to you the first time. Their parents, stop, 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 stop. And the parents, ah, leave me alone. Because you don't enforce your authority. Okay, and the more you scream, you think it happened, and they're just laughing at you, and that's what the devil will laugh at you also if you don't know the authority that you have behind the, uh, and the power that you have. Amen? Matthew 28, verse 16. Ready? It says, 
Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed and made an appointment with them. Will Jesus make an appointment with you? Yeah, don't be late for that appointment. Amen. Verse 17. And when they saw him, they fell down and worshipped him. But some doubted. There could be somebody here that's doubting this word right now. Verse 18. Jesus approached and breaking the silence said to them, all authority. What is that? All power of rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Do you believe that? Amen. Not some authority, all authority. And if you have Christ, you know who has that authority? You do also. Okay, verse 19. Go then and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the, into the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Verse 20. Teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you all the days, perpetually, uniformly, and on every occasion. What is every occasion? So why do you think that you're alone? I feel alone. Stop it. God is with you. Jesus is with you. The Holy Spirit is with you on every occasion. Come on. That's good news. Amen. Come on. What does he say? To the very close and consummation of the age. Amen. So let it be. When you see the amen in the scripture, man, take it to the bank. Amen? Amen. amen. So now, look now, we're starting to look at power and authority. Luke 10, 19. Look what it says. Behold. Look at someone. Tell them, behold. behold. Tell them, pay attention. Amen. This is for you. This is for you, right? Behold, I have given you authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions. What does this mean? And physical and mental strength and ability over all the power that the enemy possesses, and nothing shall in any way harm you. So we read that, but pastor, you don't understand. No, you have the power and you have the authority. You don't understand. Okay, you better start to understand or you're going to get your head cut off by the devil. Okay, so now Hudson Church is important that we get our power and our authority to use the name of Jesus once we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. You don't have to ask him uh, for it. He gives it to you freely in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Is that important? For, is that good news? Amen. You have it already. Tell somebody, you already have the power. Tell them. So then ask him, why are you acting, walking around so weakly? You got the power. Amen. Be confident in Jesus' name. Speak to your mountain. Start speaking to God about the mountain, and you speak to your mountain in Jesus' name. Husband, get in line. Kid, get in line. Finances, get in line in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. It's important. We must not allow, uh, or we must now allow the word of God, allow the Holy Spirit to teach us how to use this authority this power correctly. Amen? Police officers, they go to training to use, the word, to use their authority, correct? And they, they get a weapon, and they get trained how to use that weapon. I know I've spoken to some uh, young police officers, and they, when they get home, they look at themselves in the mirror with the gun, and they, they practice their looks, their looks of intimidation, right? So, so they can look menacing on the streets. And if you don't believe I'm saying the truth, I am speaking the truth when it comes to this, okay? Uh, so it's important that you got to learn how to use your power or you'll misuse your power, okay? John 16, 23, look what it says. Ready? And in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. you got to ask uh, 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 the things that you have the power to ask in the name of Jesus, are you asking? Okay. I have six witnesses on this. John 50, verse 24. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive. Why? That your joy may be full. Some of you have stopped asking because you've been beat up so much that you're afraid of asking God for things. Stop it and start asking in Jesus' name. Some of you need to ask for me and my house. We're all going to serve the Lord in Jesus' name. I mean, your son might be going wild right now. Ask, and, 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 as for me and my house, we, we're all going to be serving the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen? John 15, 7. Look what it says. If you abide in me, which means live in him, and my words abide in you, 
you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Do you believe that, Hudson Church? Yeah. Next witness, John 14, 14. If you ask anything in my name, what does it say? Do you believe that? Pastor, but you know, I don't know if that's really for me, okay? You, you're not going to get anything. Let's read it again. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen. Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Do you believe that? Yes. Matthew 21, 22. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believe ye, you will receive. Okay, Luke eleven ten. 10. Look what it said, 9, I'm sorry. So I say to you, ask and it might be given. What does it say? Okay, but, uh, it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. Hudson Church, verse 10. For someone who asks, for those who come to Bible study who ask, what does it say? Everyone. Who asks what? Receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open to you. That's the church. This is for you in Jesus' name. Tell someone, this is for you. Start asking in Jesus' name. Except Jesus, they're going to go through things that have not even happened yet in the history of mankind. So we want people to share, to know the Lord Jesus uh, before it's too late for them. Amen? mouth out there, open it up for the things of God, for asking in Jesus' name. And then watch out, they don't smack you <laughs> in regards to that. Amen? So now, the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. That's why you need the power, the Word of God with the Holy Spirit together. John 14, 26, look what it says. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. And bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. You must read the word of God so that you can have the word in you. Then the Holy Spirit will bring it into your remembrance. And the Holy Spirit will teach you what you just read in the word of God in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Romans 8.26, look what it says. So too the Holy Spirit comes to our aid and he bears us up in our weakness. Some of you are so weak. And you're not, you have help for, available, but you got to ask, Holy Spirit, help me to deal with these issues in my life in Jesus' name. Okay? What does it say? For we do not know what prayer to offer, nor how to offer it worthily as we ought to. But the Spirit himself goes to meet our supplication and pleads on our behalf with unspeakable yearnings and groanings too deep for utterance. Praying in tongues is so important if you want to live the abundant life in 2024. I pray that everybody that is here under the sound of my voice, whether here or through the app, has the power of praying in tongues in Jesus' name. Amen. It's available to all of us. Not everybody will receive it because they don't want to. You can still go to heaven without this, but you have it available to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 27, look what it says. And he who searches the hearts of men knows what is in the mind of the Holy Spirit, what his intent is, because the Spirit intercedes and pleads before God in, in behalf of the saints according to and in harmony with God's will. When you pray in tongue, Hunter Church, you always pray correctly. When you're praying in English or in any other language that's spoken here on planet Earth, you might think you're praying correctly, but in fact, a lot of times we are not. That's why it's important to pray in tongues in Jesus' name. Amen? Then the other part, the word of God will correct 
and will teach you all things. It's important that some of us refuse to study the Word of God. Some of us refuse to meditate the Word of God. And a devotional is not studying the Word of God. I read a devotional. I read a, the scripture of the day. That's not studying the Word of God. You must, all these stories, this is a history, but this is our manual for us to study it and spend time in it if you want to live the abundant life. Amen? Amen. 2 Timothy 2.15, look what it says. Be, no, give it to me, yes, okay. Be diligent to present yourself, what? Approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Can you wrongly divide this word? Yeah. Yes, you can. That's why you need the Holy Spirit, and you need, uh, when somebody says something, my Zoom class, my youngsters, they know I tell them, where is that in the Word of God? Don't believe something that sounds good. Where is that in the Word of God so that I, I want to see it? It's not that I want to see it to believe it, but I want to know that I know that I know that it's in there uh, in Jesus' name. Amen? Yeah. Jo uh, uh, Joshua 1.8, look what it says. This book of the law shall not depart from your eyes. From your mouth. What does that mean? You got to speak the word of God. But you shall do what? Meditate in it day and night. Why? That you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. So if I'm not studying the word of God, I will not be prosperous as I can be and I will not have as much success as I can have. Some of you have some success and some prosperity, but you can have more if you spend more time in the word of God in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. It's up to you to dedicate that time. Amen? <laughs> Deuteronomy 27.10, look what it says. Therefore, you shall obey what? The voice of the Lord your God and observe his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today. Do you know that when you pray to God, who's speaking? We are. When you read the word of God, who's speaking to you? God. So the more you read, you're hearing the voice of God. So when you're reading his word, your voice becomes the voice of God. And that's why some of you don't, I, I don't hear God. I, I don't hear from God. Yeah, you don't read the word of God. If you're reading the word of God, you'll be hearing from God because this is the voice of God. Amen? It's important, Hudson Church. Psalms 56.10. Look how beautiful this is, right? In God, I will praise his word. In the Lord, I will praise his word. You have to learn how to praise his word. Respect it. When we read the word of God, this should be an honor to read the word of God. We should treasure it to read the word of God. Some of you have photo albums, and you look at it, and you're like, be careful with the pictures. That picture's 40 years old. And the word of God, you treat it like it's not, not invaluable. This is the, the greatest power in the universe is right here in the word of God. Hudson Church, come on. Amen? So now, my deliverance uh, uh, leaders and class, pay attention, okay? This is an example for us to put into practice today. And that's why I recommend you to go to the deliverance class so you can learn how to use your authority correctly in Jesus' name, all right? A police officer has the authority to enforce the law. Yes or no? Okay. When a policeman stops you, he can give you a warning. Has anybody gotten a warning from a police officer? So, woo, you let me go, Right? Can a police officer give you a summons? Can a police officer arrest you on that spot? Three things he can do. A warning, a summons, or arrest you. Amen? Who makes a decision? The police officer. He's using, learning, doing how to use his authority, his power. The way what? The way he wants to. We get that? All right, pay attention now. In 2024, we have the authority. We have the power to use this against Satan, okay? Some of us are only giving Satan, you know what, a warning. Don't mess with my house. You better not. You're giving him a warning, okay? Instead of throwing him into prison, okay? Do you have the, the right and authority to throw the devil into prison? Amen. The word of God says, you know, for you who doubt, look at uh, Revelation 20, verse 1 and 2. Revelation 20, this the Holy Spirit gave it to me on my way here. I wanted to add the, the, the cherry on top of the vanilla cone with, with uh, colored sprinkles. Revelation 20, verse 1 and 2, please. Ready? One, and give it from New King James. Please. Revelation 20, 1 and 2. Look at this. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the keys to the bottomless pit 
and a great chain in his hand. Can you use that chain? Yes, you can. Verse 2, look what it says. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who was the devil and Satan, and bound them up for a thousand years. Settle that you can bind them up for a day. Some of you need to bind them up for a day. At least to get a day's rest. Some of you can bind them up for a week. Choose to bind them out of your house forever Amen. in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Whatever Jesus did, we can do that also. In Je- but that's only in Revelation. No, use that authority in Jesus' name. This could be Revelation, rhema word for someone today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So it is up to you, Hudson Church. God will not choose what you're going to do to the devil. Stop giving him a warning. Stop giving him a ticket. Throw him into prison. Cast them out of your lives in Jesus' name. Amen. I choose this. Amen. I choose from this moment to throw Satan into prison in Jesus' mighty name. I will rebuke the devil from my life, from my family's life, and I will cast them into outer darkness. Learn how to rebuke the devil uh, from your lives in Jesus' name. Amen. So just a quick little story. Okay. When I went, was put into prison, and in case you didn't know, yes, I served almost seven years in prison. All right? You know who was rejoicing? Satan was rejoicing. You know who else was rejoicing? My enemies. Did Pastor Renee have enemies? <laughs> oh, yeah. People say, we got rid of him. Hudson County is free from him. Ah, he is done. They threw him away and threw away the keys. But you know what happened? Eventually, I was let loose. <laughs> I was only for a while, and people said, he's never coming back. He is done. He is destroyed. And just like the two witnesses who were resurrected, God resurrected me back up in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Now listen to this. Now I am making Satan pay dearly for messing with me and for messing with my family in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? So now with my power, but by the power and the authority of the name of Jesus, I'm doing this in Jesus' name. Amen? So you have this power. Make the devil pay for your kid who's strung out on drugs. Make him pay for that daughter that doesn't want to pay attention. Make him pay. Use that authority in Jesus' mighty name. Stop putting up with the lies of the devil and rebuke him in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Who is it up to? Us. Us. If your business is slow, call in business into your establishment in Jesus' name. you got to remind God, God, I have sown good seeds, and I declare business into my business in Jesus' mighty name. Use your words. Use the power in Jesus, and rebuke people in your own organization that are speaking against it. Oh, today's another bad day. You, that's your, your, your people. Sometimes you believe and your spouse is the one opening the door. Sometimes it's your kids. Somebody is, it's an in-law. Whoever it is, you got to learn how to rebuke that in Jesus' name. Not in my house in Jesus' name. Amen? So remember, we have to be aware of the Antichrist and the deceivers. I'm going to close with this. 2 John 1. Look what it says. For many imposters. What's an imposter? A seducer. A deceivers. And are there false leaders? Man, they are. Have gone out into the world, men who will not acknowledge, confess, admit the coming of Jesus Christ the Messiah in a bodily form. There are churches that don't even talk about the last days. And I want to hear about love. You better know what's happening right now that's coming to us in Jesus' name. Let's say Gumbaya and everything is happy. And when all, hey, hey you know, everything is being destroyed all around us. Amen? Uh, such. A warrant is the imposter, the seducer, the deceiver, the false leader, the antagonist of Christ, and the antichrist. Verse 8. Look to yourselves, Hudson Church. Take care that you may not lose, throw away, or destroy all that we have, all that we and you have labored for, but that you may persevere until you win and receive back a perfect reward in full. Do you have to persevere as a Christian? Do you have to persevere to stay married? Do you have to persevere to be a parent, to be in business? Man, to be a businessman right now, you have to persevere what's happening in Jesus' name. Amen? Verse 9. Anyone who runs on ahead of God and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ, who is not content with what he, t- what he taught, does not have God. There's some people who want to get more information, more information. They're not content with what they have. I need more. 
What more do you need, man? Christ died for you. He paid the price for your sins. If you confess Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart, you're going to heaven. That's it. I don't need no more. In Jesus' name. I need more. I need more. One more you, you don't even know what you've got right now, and you want more of what? More nonsense to fill your heads up with craziness. Amen? A- amen? But keep on re- reading. But he, if anyone comes to you, what did you do? You really blew my hand. All right, ready? Did we finish nine? Yes or no? Okay, verse 10. Okay, okay, no. But he who continues to live in the doctrine, teaching of Christ does not, does have God. He has both the Father and the Son. Verse 10. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, is disloyal to what Jesus the Christ taught us in church, do not receive him, do not accept him, do not welcome or admit him into your house or bid him Godspeed or give him any encouragement. Some of you are encouraging people that are not teaching the right things and you think it's going to be okay for, with you. Selai, meditate on that. Okay? It's all right, no applause. Verse 11. For he who wishes him success, who encourages him, wishing him Godspeed, is a partaker in his evil doings. Amen? So make the thief restore, Hudson Church. I finish with this. Do you know that anything the devil has stolen from you, he must restore seven times? Amen. Are you asking, the de- are you commanding, saying, you robbed from me? You got to pay me back seven times in Jesus' name. I didn't know that, Pastor. That's right. That's why you're destroyed. Uh, Proverbs 6, 30 and 31. Ready? Men do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy himself when he is hungry. Let me ask you this. Who here has the devil robbed from? Did he rob from you because he was hungry or he just wanted to mess with you? So does this apply to him? Did he rob rob you because he was hungry? No. He robbed you because he wanted to mess with you. Amen? Amen? Verse 31, but if he is found out, he must. Say something to him, he must. Tell him, he must restore seven times what he stole. He must give the whole substance of his house, if necessary, to meet his fine. When Jesus was tempted at the Mount of Temptation, and he said, I give you, look at all this. This is all mine to give. If you bow down to me, I give it all to you. That means that's what the devil owns. So his house is full of treasures. Make the devil pay and make him restore seven times. Now, we don't have that power to do it ourselves. We must use the power and the authority to give this assignment to God, and then he will enforce it on our behalf in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Praise the Lord. I want to make sure of this. I'm a landlord. When people don't pay me the rent, I I have to evict them. But I can't go in and grab them by the throat and throw them out. I have to go to court. I have to get a judgment. After I get the judgment, I have to go to the sheriff. The sheriff then uh, executes the warrant, and then he's the one who does it. So you have to first issue the, uh, the, uh, uh, the complaint. So God, the devil stole from my, he stole my peace. God, the devil stole my, my health. God, he stole my marriage. God, I had to declare bankruptcy and he stole my house. Whatever it may be. And then say, I give you this assignment and, and God execute this on my behalf and just give me back my house. Some of you might say that, right? You already blew it. He gave you seven times a bigger house. Why would you want just your house back? Some of you are happy. Just give me back what I lost. I'll be happy with that. If you can get seven times, why don't you get seven times? Then you can give another house to six other people. Do you follow me? Use your authority in Jesus' mighty name. My time is out. Can we get a clap offering?